Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. And lately, we've been seeing a round of articles about Star Citizen in the PC gaming and general computing press, which seem to be an awful lot like the ones we saw last year, except that these say that Star Citizen has been in development for 10 years, rather than saying that Star Citizen has been in development for 9 years, or 8, or 7, or... Well, you get the idea. Although, to be fair, it won't actually be 10 years until October, and even October was the Kickstarter event, the start of fundraising for the project, not the start of the project. Anyhow, since the titles of these articles have been so cut and paste, you are undoubtedly unsurprised that the content is also so cut and paste. It's been so long and so much money and just edit the year's fundraising total and still there is no game and nothing to be shown for it. Meanwhile, the rest of us on the inside are like, yeah! Really? There's no game that I have been playing all this time? And there's nothing to show for it? What are all these studios and all these workers and all this amazing technology and so forth? But neither is there nothing deserving of criticism. There is plenty deserving of criticism. But it isn't the criticism of the stories that are being told. So why is it that the gaming press has been so lame and shallow about Star Citizen? Then, how to compare that to the reality that the players are actually operating under, and then, what is the story that they should be writing, but aren't? The principal thing to realize about the articles in the general PC gaming press is that they are written by people who generally know very little about the game because they have to cover a great many writing assignments on a great number of games, and they are written for a target audience who also doesn't really know much about the game, and so they want a simple narrative. They preferably a simple narrative that makes them feel okay about not knowing much about the game. It's a scam, it's a failure, it'll never be anything. So now the author can feel good about themselves as a writer for not having spent more time really learning about it because it really isn't worth learning more about. And the reader doesn't have to feel any fear of missing out because they've been told that they should feel lucky that they aren't one of those people who have been suckered into the scam. Meanwhile, the rest of us on the inside are like, here do But for a writer, there is also templates for stories. There is a structure and vocabulary for writing an obituary. There is a structure and vocabulary about a crime story. There is a structure and vocabulary for writing about a natural disaster. There is a structure and vocabulary about a political scandal. And in large part, the audience perceives the story simply through the structure and vocabulary being used. And game journalism has been around long enough to have its own templates. There is a structure and vocabulary for celebrating success, and there is a structure and vocabulary for denigrating failure. And there have been enough examples of games that have never come out and projects that were scammed that they have their own templates. But there isn't a template for imperfection. There isn't a template for a slow and complicated progress. There isn't a vocabulary for games that are both fun and frustrating. Those aren't the simple narratives. Now, as an aside, some of you might be wondering, where do I get off making such a pointed criticism of journalism being just a YouTube maker? You realize, of course, that statement was a setup, because you've also no doubt guessed that a set of pipes like this certainly has spent some time in newscasting, even if it's just dabbling in college radio. These aren't radio bowling league trophies, although it looks like they could be. They are Golden Mike Awards, and they are given for broadcast journalism in Southern California, and they do not come easily. And if that experience in broadcast news has taught me anything, it is that news should be new. Because if it isn't new, it isn't news. And pointing out that a year has passed, and money has been raised, and the game is still called an alpha, isn't new. There's nothing even remotely new about it. It's like the folks who post on Spectrum along the lines of, After having been away for a while, we have to return to find ourselves dismayed that the game not only isn't finished, but that we have discovered bugs, which displeases us greatly. To which those of us who have been here all along said, Oh, thank you for telling us that we were so unaware of those things. Now, if you don't mind, me! Because here's the thing, wannabe journalist. If you can't figure out how to make your news story actually new, ask yourself, what's changed? Because there's always something that has changed. More than one year on the calendar and a new total in the fundraising pool. 
and in fact almost everything about the relationship between CIG and the player base of Star Citizen has changed. Now I know that for people with a negative mindset, what I'm about to talk about will sound a lot like this. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. But indeed, the deal has been altered over pretty much the last four years, starting with a commitment to a quarterly release schedule and then eventually adding a development roadmap that, that is kept up to date with regular information when it changes. Listen to the posts on Spectrum, the comments on YouTube, and streamers in the chat in the game, and you will hear absolutely nobody talking about release dates and beta or whatever. No. All the talk is about what will be in 3.17, what will be in 3.18, what will be with 3.19, will it actually be 4.0? Star Citizen, mostly through being even more detailed and open, has had its user base still be just as hungry for improvement, but on a time frame much closer and a granularity much more detailed. It is somewhat like the relationship that players have with a released MMO, even though everybody agrees that it's clearly still alpha. But nobody really talks about release date. Somebody comes on Spectrum or in-game chat and starts whining about when will the game ever be released, and it's kind of a sure giveaway that they're just here to troll. So to put this altered deal relationship between CIG and the Star Citizen players into specific points, it is this. One, there will be quarterly releases with new content. Two, there will be openness about which content is targeted for which release and honesty when they have to be delayed. Three, during Alpha, the primary focus will be on feature creation and secondarily on bug fixing. Four, at some quarterly release, who knows how far in the future, it will be agreed that the game is essentially feature complete and the designation will then be Beta 1.0. With Beta 1.0, the quarterly releases will focus to switch almost exclusively on bug fixing with further quarterly releases. Six, when everybody has been satisfied with bug fixing and balance, it will be designated as released. Nobody knows or is particularly worried about when that is. So the question that the outside press continues to harp on, when will the game be released, for anybody inside the community is so abstract and remote from the actual concerns that it might as well be talking about angels dancing on the head of a pin. But what about the game that was promised 10 years ago? Where is it? Well, honestly, you don't want the game that was promised 10 years ago. Consider the two things that the community is most focused on in the upcoming patches. The first is the new renderer with the Vulkan integration and eventual ray tracing support, and the second is server meshing, both of which the community thinks are going to be milestones in delivering the game that was promised 10 years ago. But they aren't. Vulkan is only six years old. There's no way that it was part of the promised game 10 years ago. Neither were PC cards with ray tracing support, and server meshing, as currently being built, has at its very core the Entity Graph Database. And when you are talking about Amazon Web Services and Graph Databases, you are almost certainly talking about using AWS Neptune, which is less than four years old. And then there are procedural planets, which clearly weren't in the scheme of things 10 years ago, but which are central to what is the best about the current state of the game. And for which, for example, mining wouldn't be what it currently is in the game. So with the release date having morphed to a distant abstraction and the game being so much being composed of things impossible to have been promised 10 years ago, how do you judge it? Well, it seems as though you have to look at the promise behind the promise. For example, 10 years ago, we were promised that we would get a CD of the music from the game. Now, needless to say, nobody wants a CD of music from the game, if for no other reason that we hope that the best, most deserving tracks are still to be written. But the promise behind the promise was that the soundtrack for Star Citizen would be worthy of being put on a CD. And it is. And then there was the promise to create a big glossy coffee table book about the ships of Star Citizen, which nobody wants because that too would mean freezing the development and statistics of ships just to make a book of them. But the promise behind the promise was that the ships would be gorgeously detailed, which they are. And there was a promise for 100 star systems, which was before procedural planets made systems massively larger in the explorable and playable area. So the promise behind the promise, a huge game world, took on whole different metrics than just the number of cities where you could land. And so then there is the promise behind the promise behind the promise. The best damn space sim ever. And I'm not going to declare that it is, and neither is CG ready to either. We all know it's not yet. But that leaves a nagging question, and that is, 
If it isn't, what is? And despite how flawed Star Citizen is, I really don't see the alternative that actually is better. Flawed Alpha as it is, it has a fair claim to being the best damn space simulator for now. But much as there is a story behind how the relationship between Star Citizen and its players has been reconstructed in the last four years, its opposite is the relationship between those same supporters and Squadron 42, which rather than being based on a continued stream of honesty, has fallen into a black hole. It's like, I have altered the deal, but I'm not going to tell you it because I want it to be secret. And I don't think I'm alone among content creators about not really knowing what to say about Squadron 42 at all. We had a nice vertical slice four years ago, and then one year ago, one episode of what was supposed to be a quarterly series discussing development, and apart from that, we get sent progress reports which are so vague in general, it might as well be just people are still doing their jobs. In the sense of giving any real indication of what the path is ahead or where we are along it, it pretty much is your guess is as good as mine, so well, let's just talk about the persistent universe instead, which may be well just what they want us to do. This deal is getting worse all the time. Which also goes to, why is this the case? Is it because they are embarrassed about how little has been done? Or are they deathly afraid of anything that might give a clue to the content of the game? Which honestly, if you are that dependent on the enjoyment of the game pivoting on the surprise of seeing things for the first time, aren't you sort of cutting out the replayability of your game design? But honestly, I see clues that it might be they're embarrassed at the lack of our progress and clues that they really don't want to spoil anything. And I just don't know what to say. But that is nothing compared to the confusing silence around theaters of war. It's like, I have altered the deal, but at least I might have. We're not really decided on what the deal is, but when we are, I'm sure that there will be some sort of announcement. Guys? Guys? We've had public play events, so there really isn't any secret about what theaters of war is supposed to do. And the whole instant action arena play genre, like Call of Duty, is a maximum replay event. So, so there really isn't no reason at all why whatever is going on behind the scenes can't be treated with the same honest openness as the persistent universe. And that goes even if they've decided to make it an internal use only tool. We're big boys. We can handle disappointment. That should be clear by now. But one thing that will not be a disappointment is the Gold Channel Chip giveaway. As of recording, we are at 44% of the subscriber goal and 27% of the member goal to release to some lucky player their choice of either the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey long duration exploration carrier. One entry per video, members are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication of the winning video, they win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just be a subscriber and comment somehow using the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what Darth Vader did to the deal. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.